of you that are watching us online at www.nationalactionnetwork.net. We appreciate, we appreciate you that have signed on and have joined us. Of course, for those that are watching us online, we always invite you to tour the website. There is plenty to experience on the National Action Network website, and we hope that you take full advantage of it. Of course, if you are a member, we thank you. If you are not a member, while you're there, please join National Action Network. Three, two, one, go. We're back, brothers and sisters. We're here. We're live. We're in the House of Justice for our Saturday Action Rally here at National Action Network. I'd like you to get on your feet right now for the president and founder of the National Action Network, the Reverend Dr. Al Sharpton. No justice. No peace. No justice. No peace. No justice. No peace. No justice. No peace. What do we want? Justice. What do we want? Justice. What do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Now. 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 Hug the person next to you. Tell them you know. www.nationalactionnetwork.net We're happy to be with you another Saturday morning where the action is. Give a hand to our presider, Attorney Michael Hardy. Yeah. And certainly our director for the Eastern Region, National Action Network, Brother Kirsten Ford. Yeah. Let us to Kirsten Ford. Let me uh, congratulate uh, Minister Foy and uh, all of those, uh, Brother Stephen Marshall and uh, uh, our 
people that uh, work in the local chapter along with Huddle and, and uh, our young people yeah. that had the yeah. forum this week. Yeah. One, one of the things that is important is that we understand and work with an understanding. One thing to have an understanding is another thing to work at. Yeah. And the only way we are going to change the political climate is we're going to have to do it from the bottom to the top. Yeah. There is no top-down movement. No. It's a bottom-up movement. And one of the things that has really uh, encouraged me is to see our young people that really uh, have internalized that. And uh, this week, uh, they had the forum on the city council race here in uh, Harlem. And I've said all over the country that unless you start changing the city council seats, state legislative seats, then go citywide seats, then go uh, statewide, then go national, yeah. you're not going to change anything. And I think that a lot of us do not understand that what one of the greatest misinformation uh, pieces they were able to get out is to break people from studying their history. That's right. We call this African American History Month or Black History Month, and yet we don't study our history. How did we get to Barack Obama? Started when we started fighting on a county level in the 70s and 80s. Let me tell you something, in 1979, 75, Prince Sutton and others ran for mayor. Yes. It was out of that mobilization, Chisholm ran president in 72, the 75 uh, 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 kind of mode began forming what they call in New York uh, 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 at the time the Coalition for Just New York that became a coalition that on the political side, it became the empowerment group that changed some of the legislative seats in Brooklyn. And it became, on the civil rights side, a drive to name a black school chancellor yeah. named Thomas Minton. Yeah. Reverend Bishop Herbert Dodge, who's here this morning, yeah. was one of the key place, uh, uh, leaders of that and convenience. And conveners of that. We used to meet at the House of the Lord Church. Uh -huh. So we would fight for Thomas Mentor mm -hmm. to become the school's chancellor. Because the winner of that race that Prince's son was in was a man named Ed Koch, sure. who appointed Robert Wagner over Mentor. I never get the night that they had the uh, selection. Yeah. Uh, they got ready to vote. I jumped up and sat on the platform and protested that. And we went from there. My point is that that coalition of empowerment that changed some of the seats in Brooklyn became a citywide movement that was energized by Reverend Jackson's run for president and led to the election of Dave Dinkins. It was always opposed by the regular Democrats. They had to take over the Democratic stuff. So when you see Kirsten now and, and, and Stephen Marshall and Reverend Kim McCall and them saying that the issues of empowerment, whether it's raise the age or whether it is whatever, is more important than party affiliation. Y'all get into these arguments. They are in the tradition of the liberation struggle. Because that's the way it always was. When I ran, none of the traditional black democratic leadership 
ever supported me. That's why it, it tickles me now when they come to me like they supported me. When I ran for the U.S. Senate, when I ran president and mayor, none of them ever supported me. We ran and won every black district without their support. So when they call themselves coming telling on Kirsten to me, they must have forgotten who they're talking to. <laughs> what I'm coming out talking to me now, man, you know, I know you all over the country, you don't know. So and so and so and so and so and so. And, and you know, Kirsten's all right, find your man. But so and so and so. And Kevin McCall, and you got a lot of energy, but so and so and so. so. I do like my mother said, do tell. <laughs> but it is, if you are going to be in the tradition of a freedom fighter, that is a different tradition than a club or leader that's going to go by club rules. Right. Nothing wrong with either one, right. but different roles. Right. Let me put it to you this way. Right. Some of y'all this week watched, they've had a series on uh, BT on uh, Nelson Mandela. One of the things you learned watching that series, you had the ANC and the PAC. It has never always been one movement. Right. It was always one goal, different approaches. Now, if the goal is changing policy, then all of us can get there however we get there. If the goal is empowering individuals, then it's you against somebody. I just want to be clear what the goal is. Yeah. So the debate for me is not who, but what. That's right. Come on. McCall, dealing with a case right now. Well, the guy's record was, I don't care about what. The goal is justice. Don't give me no bio. If at a certain date and a certain time, a policeman operated outside the law. Whatever the guy did five years, ten years before, that had nothing to do with that time. So is the goal to write a bio or the victim? Or to deal with the crime in question? I know what y'all after. Y'all be asking the wrong questions, getting the wrong answer. Man shoots man, mistakenly shoots woman, 5 o'clock Thursday. Y'all saying the man he shot 10 years ago, jaywalk. What that got to do with 5 o'clock Thursday? I don't know what nobody did. But I know you don't have a right for a wrongful shooting. And I'm in the wrongful business. I ain't in the bio business. That's why we keep the house dressers on the ground. Anybody can roll in here that ain't got no big background. I don't want no big cathedral. I want to just wear it. Folk come in, got to get dressed up. That's right. Ain't none of that. Because people that have to qualify to get help are not qualified to give help. All right. Somebody got to reach your standard to come talk to you. Something's wrong. Then you are not, in my judgment, of any standard. I tell anybody when they come to us, give me all your mess, because you can't tell me no mess you and your family been in that mine ain't done twice. You ain't got to come with all that. Well, you know, I don't get along with mom, or mom and dad, you're having good. I, all y'all gonna fight, I'll get all that, because my family fight out. Yes. 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 Yeah, Reverend, your, your family fight Thanksgiving to No, we don't even show up at the same day. <laughs> We fight so much, we have different turkeys. <laughs> One of my 
brothers won't even have it on Thanksgiving Day. He had a day before. He's so mad at us, he celebrated on Wednesday because he wasn't going to do it up. Now let's get down to the business. Some of y'all are too proper to be relevant. Our people need help. They don't need to be investigated to qualify for help. We need help. And if you ain't gonna help, then get out the way. That's right. Yes, sir. So I'm very proud of what they have done in terms of the forum this week. It will take that kind of energizing movement, Sister Jefferson and and what uh, all of them have done to affect the election. And y'all that live in Harlem. Uh, in this council district, the special election yes. is this Tuesday. Yes. So you that live in this district, they had the debate here the other night, y'all go and vote. I don't tell you to vote for, but go and vote. All of y'all that live here in this Harlem district, yes. Dominique Shopton. <laughs> oh, did I say that? I didn't need to tell everybody business. <laughs> but y'all vote on Tuesday. That's right. Polls open at what time, Dawn? 6 a.m. and close at 9 p.m. all over the district. Yes. Now, I'm going to deal with uh, a lot of this stuff that happened this week on Politics Nation in the morning. Make sure you watch it. You know, the president is so that I have to do my TV show live now because you, you know, I used to pre tape. A lot of it on Friday night, but he get to tweeting and carrying on so now. <laughs> to your stuff will be late. It'd be old if you, so I got to do it every week live. Because y'all got a tweeting president now. He changed the whole news cycle in the middle of the night. Just getting up to tweet. I changed my mind. <laughs> I went to bed the other night. We were dealing with China and Taiwan. I woke up here tweeted, I think it's one China policy. <laughs> he has nominated Gorsuch for the Supreme Court. Now let me deal with that a minute, then I want to get into uh, Mr. Sessions. Now, Antonian Scalia, died a year ago this month. President Barack Obama was in office when Scalia died. He nominated to take Scalia's seat, Judge Garland. Garland, by all accounts, was qualified, more than qualified, to take the job. He had been confirmed for the judicial seat he was sitting in at that time. They not only would not vote to confirm him for the Supreme Court, they wouldn't even give him a hearing to discuss whether he was qualified or not. I want you to watch this now. From February to February, they would not even consider the nomination of a sitting president called Barack Obama. Now they want to talk about, since Trump has nominated Gorsuch, how qualified he is. Well, he ain't no more qualified than Garland was. The danger of this proceeding is, are you now saying that you will select Supreme Court judges based on if the party in the White House corresponds with the party that has the majority in the Senate? Then you have, in effect, changed the constitutional requirements to select a Supreme Court judge. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right now, the, the requirements is President nominates Supreme Court judge, Senate examines and votes, and they become a Supreme Court judge. If y'all go through 
the way they've got it set up now, you need to change the Constitution to say that the president nominates and if his party right. has the majority of the Senate, then it proceeds. If not, right. they can stall as long as they want till their man gets in the White House. So while they're debating all this stuff, Gossage running around, hey, well, you look old, I'm going to see this guy, I'm going to see that guy. He told this guy that, he told that guy that. The issue I want to know is how y'all going to have a hearing on Gossage and wouldn't have one on God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's first deal with what are the new rules. One of the things I keep telling y'all every week is you cannot submit to a double standard without getting double crossed. The minute you allow a double standard, then you'll be in double crossed. Now, brings me right into Mr. Sessions. Sessions was confirmed this week and sworn in. Betsy DeVos sworn in. We opposed Sessions. I went to Alabama and opposed. Spoke in Huntsville two weeks ago. I was at the hearings. Why did we oppose him? Part of our big march uh, almost a month ago now was criminal justice. On voting rights, he said voting rights, the voting rights bill was an intrusion. Prosecuted people in Marion, Alabama that was proven to have done no voter fraud. On criminal justice, he was against police reform. In terms of commutation of low-level, nonviolent drug offenders, he was against that. He's for the president's ban on immigrants, and he's for the president's raising these Feelings about Muslims. We opposed. We went to the hearings, as I said, we marched, we protested. He was elected uh, by the Senate the other night after Elizabeth Warren stood up on the floor of the Senate to read a letter from Mrs. Coretta Scott King opposing Sessions being nominated for federal judge in 1986. Many of you know Mrs. King was very close to Nash Action Network. There's a picture of her right there taking me to her, her husband, Martin Luther King's grave. Around That was around 2002. She was coming to our conventions every year. I know Mrs. King was not the kind of woman to make statements just out of emotion, without facts, and without her making a deliberate view No. Yesterday, I got word that the Attorney General, the new Attorney General Sessions, called the president of the NAACP and called, the, uh, who had protested his nomination as we did, called the president of National Urban League and wanted to call me. I said, he can call me. I'm, I'm, I'm hospitable. I talk to everybody. He called me yesterday evening. I said, now, let me say to you, Mr. Sessions, several things. First of all, I think it's a good effort you reaching out to many of us that were critical of you. Here are my concerns, very clear. Voting rights, your record on voting rights, your position on voting rights. People died to give me the right to vote. Not just have to get 18. That's right. That's right. People died That's right. to give me the right to vote. This cannot be compromised. You can't, on one hand, talk about there is voter fraud and you need voter ID in Alabama, where you from and my mama was from. And then the only place that in the black majority counties that you can get state photo ID is from the Department of Motor Vehicle, DMV officers. 
And y'all closed the DMV offices in the counties that the majority were the blacks in eight counties. Can't have it both ways. So we need to deal with that. We need to deal with criminal justice. Mr. Sessions, I want to know whether you're going to continue the commutation of low-level nonviolent drug offenders that President Obama started. President Obama commuted more than the last 11, pres 11 presidents put together. I want to know, are you going to deal with the President Obama's 21st century police? And while I'm there, there is a federal indictment on Officer Walter Scott's killer in North Charleston, South Carolina. Are you going to force that to trial or are you going to slow it down? And are you going to continue the federal grand jury investigation with intensity on the choking death of Eric Garner? about the Civil Rights Division of the Justice Department. Yes, Who's going to head that up? Is that going to be a priority? Where is all the power? I'm mean, hearing all this stuff y'all going to do about keeping folk from the cut coming in the country. What about those of us that are in the country and that have worked to build the country that face discrimination every day? I want to hear about discrimination, not immigration. Folk that coming in here didn't bother us as much as those that were in here that kept us unequal and treated unfair. I said these are the things that we want to know about and active cases. And I'm going to tell you now, I'm going to tell everybody, I'm, I'm, I'm one of those, you know, my, I had one sister grew up with me, and she'll tell you, i tell. Yes. <laughs> Say, don't do nothing around Al, he tells. <laughs> Soon as mama come home, I'm telling. So I told Mr. Session, you call me and I'm telling. Come on now. And I'm telling what we talked about. That's right. If y'all don't want me to tell, don't call me. Cause I can't hardly get off the phone. My hand be trembling quickly. So I can hit the button and tell somebody. When Trump called me, I told him. I beat him to the Twitter. He picked it up and I tweeted him. I tell, I tweet, I Instagram. I sky page, I do it any kind of way I can tell. Because anything secret ain't going to happen. We need to put the pressure on Sessions and Trump just like the Tea Party put the pressure on President Obama. Y'all sitting around talking about, I don't know what's going to happen. Make it happen. The pity part is over. We're going to put pressure from the bottom to the top. We're not going to sit here and act like we have got nothing to stand for. Reb Al, do you think that there's a chance to get them to do anything? What no chance for nobody to do nothing till we made it happen? You act like folk woke up one morning and gave us civil rights. Yeah. <laughs> you act like folk woke up one morning and gave us voting rights. We fought to get them. We're going to have to fight to keep them. Yeah. What about, I had a conference call last night with some civil rights leaders to explain that what my conversation was with Session about Garner, about Walter Scott's case, about voting and all. And they said, now, you think it's going to be an uphill battle? I said, absolutely, about voting. I said, well, let me ask you a question. Where is 
sessions from? They said Alabama. I said, where in Alabama? He said, Selma. I said, where was the big march about voting rights? They said, Selma. Selma is from the town that the voting rights march where John Lewis and Jose Williams was beaten, marched across the Edmund Pettus Bridge, which means he grew up knowing that if you build a movement, you can change things. He might have been on the other side of that bridge, but he saw people change from not being able to vote to vote. We can deal in a Selma way with a Selma native about Eric Garner, about Walter Scott, about the right to vote. We are the children of Hosea Williams and John Lewis. We are not surrendering. We go fight.
When I was going to school in Queens, not only did they drive us to do well academically, they took us on school trips. So we went to see Broadway plays. And we went to see FDR, President Roosevelt's house in Hyde Park and Teddy Roosevelt's house in Oyster Bay. And they took us to the Statue of Liberty in the Empire State Building. Yeah. When I got to school in Brownsville, they didn't take us nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> I had folk in my class that had never been over the Brooklyn Bridge. Right. <laughs> when I went to school in Queens, you had after-school programs. That's right. That's right. You had arts and crafts. Oh, right. You had teams. Yeah, that's right. When I got to Brownsville, the gym was in disrepair. There was no after-school. What I'm telling you is that a child is not one-dimensional. That's right. And you reduce the educational system to where you drive them for a test. Pass the SAT to pass a test, and you don't round out their life. So if you're dealing in a district where a child gets after school care, has strong parenting, has exposure to the world, because they're taking bus trips and school outings that expand their horizon, you can't look at and achieve what is not in your reality. Say that, Rev. Reason why I always want to grow up and be something is as a kid in Queens going on outings, I saw something. Yeah. Right. All right. If you limit people's views, uh -huh. you limit their dreams. Because yeah. they can't dream of what is not in their reality. Why do some kids All right. want to be a doctor and a lawyer, uh -huh. and some kids want to be a hustler? Because right. some kids, all they see is a hustler. Right. 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 One of the things that I most appreciate about my mother is after my father left, all right, she kept me in the church, all right. kept me under Bishop Washington, all right. who took me around the world preaching as a boy all preacher. Right. Kept me under Bill Jones, Reverend Jones, kept me under Reverend Dodge, kept me under Jesse Jackson. So I saw manhood yeah. in reflected by men that had built church institutions and that could discuss philosophy and politics and stand up with power. If all I saw was a guy selling crack on the corner, then my definition of success would have been to be a crack dealer. You can't blame a child for reflecting what you showed them. The schools do not produce the environment for excellence. That's right. Because you're driving teachers to drive toward a test. Yeah. Rather than drive towards shaping a human life. That's right. Well, Black History Month was important. Because first, you got to know who you are. All right. All right. That's right, Ralph. I remember the old fight when I was coming up that we want to see more blacks on television. Why was that important? Because if you never saw yourself, you would think that you did that. Then they went through the black exploitation films. Yeah. Where every black film was a hoodlum. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I remember Bob Law and them jumped on the film Superfly. Yeah. Yeah. And they fought and elevated it until now. Where they raised and they're doing films now about our history. Yeah. All of this registers in the minds of your children. Right. One of the reasons why the youth department here and Huddle is important here is that if kids get a sense of worth now, you can never take back self-worth. If you have self-value now. Tell you something. If you know that you are bad, 
It ain't easy to tell you it don't matter if you do 10 years in jail. Because you got something else on your mind. But when you break someone's ability to dream, it don't matter to them whether they go home or the records. You will accept what you think you deserve. You accept. I want y'all to bring that home today. That's your... That's your message from me. You accept what you think you deserve. That's right. When you wake up in the morning and look at your husband, that's who you think you deserve. security guard say, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Whatever you have in your life, whether it's your mate, whether it's your friend, whether it's your hangout buddy, is a reflection of how you see yourself. <laughs> if you spend time with somebody, they reflect what you see of yourself. Because you wouldn't hang out with them if you thought that you were anything different than how they are. I don't talk to folk ain't got good sense. Why? Because I got good sense. What you talking to crazy folk for unless you crazy? Blah, 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 blah. Who you talking about? She crazy. Then what you talking to them for? <laughs> crazy folk get mine. Go right to the. I don't even wait for the phone to keep I just hit the thing. Go right to my voicemail. <laughs> Ain't no, there's nothing to talk about. Because I don't see myself as crazy. Why am I investing in crazy time? We have got to reshape what we permit education to be in our community. That's right. That's right. That's right. And that's the argument around standardized testing that DeVos represents. That's the argument around charter and voucher education. Because what they are saying is that we will select some at the expense of others. So one of the things we're going to do while we work on sessions on the criminal justice side, we're going to work on the education side. We need to drive parents into these local school board meetings and we need to take over the curriculums and the running again of our schools. We are not giving away our children because they are our children. I remember we started a church adopt a school program. I meet with a lot of the ministers this week. And we at every church adopt a school near the church. This stuff ain't rocket science, real contemporary. Well, what do you do well? We make the parents in the church go to the PTA meeting. We had the children in the church bring the pastor their report card every report card time. We have the teachers and the parents know each other. Just simple stuff. I remember when we started, Dr. Y.T. Walker was the chairman of our board. He was, used to be Dr. King's executive director. He said to me about six months in, said, Al, I didn't know how effective this would be. He said, but I started seeing over two grading periods how certain of my young folk, given the report card, started improving. He said, I called one young man in my office and said, I saw from the first report card to the second, not in the third, how you improved. 
explain to me what the teacher's doing different. He said, well, I don't know. I'm just studying harder. He said, really, why? He said, because I never had nobody at home ever ask me to see my report card. And now that I feel that somebody cares enough about me to monitor where I'm going, I'm studying hard because I don't want to bring my pastor a bad report. A lot of these children don't feel loved. And you run around talking about they're not feeling loved. Well, then you need to love them. We need to put our arms around our children. Somebody put their arms around you. We gonna start an education initiative on it. I'm not gonna just write off that DeVos got it. And ain't nothing I could do. Sessions got it. Ain't nothing I can do. We had to fight adversaries all our life. All our history. Yes. Yes. And we can't stop now. No, no, Let me tell you something. The, the, the other misnomer is I, I keep the end folks talking about, well, you know, all that marching and protesting y'all do. It's time just to drop your bucket where it is. Oh, just Lord. lift yourself by your bootstraps. And if we have our own businesses and all that. Well, I support our own businesses. I think all that's right. But don't get too far and not study your history. There's a book that come out last week by a woman named Elizabeth Dowling Taylor. Not Darling Taylor, not the actress. Author, Elizabeth Dowling Taylor. She wrote a book about a guy named Daniel Malloy. Everybody read this book. It's called The Original Black Elite. Wow. Oh, yes. After Reconstruction, on, Katrina, this black history now. <laughs> After Reconstruction, yeah. blacks could vote and blacks could build their own businesses. In part because the Northerners, the Union, wanted blacks to vote to defeat the Confederate. They weren't doing it because they like us, but they were trying to break down the Confederates. In that time period, they built up a black elite. They had an enclave in Washington, D.C., where this guy Malloy and others that worked for the government and built their own businesses became wealthy, and became prominent. He became the undersecretary of the Library of Congress. Lived next door to inventors, academicians, a black elite, all of them owning their own businesses. All of them had money. What are you telling us to do now? Don't worry about the protest, just get money. They all had money, had statue, sent their kids to Ivy League school. Kids was proper, polished, all of that. Sip tea in the afternoon. <laughs> Quote all kind of philosophers and theoreticians and all that. But around 20 years in, there was an election for president. And it was a contest between Rutherford B. Hayes and Samuel J. Tiller. Y'all talk about black history, but I give y'all some in the barbershop. It got tied up so, till it led to they were going to sit down and make a deal on who was going to be the president. The deal they made with Hayes is that we will make you president uh -oh. if you remove the troops from the right. south. That's right. That's right. That's right. Am I right? Yeah. yeah. yeah if you remove the troops from the south, that means that we can go back to stopping blacks from voting. That's right. oh. We can go back to putting blacks in their place. Yes. Because even though the laws may be there, There'll be no enforcement of the laws. Yes, 
And they had the Tilton Hayes Compromise, which removed the troops from the South. Then they went in the Supreme Court that was stacked and came with Plessy versus Ferguson and changed the constitutional law. By the time they removed the troops and changed the law, the black elite had no protection. And the same Daniel Malloy, with all of his wealth and stature, ended up getting sick and dying in a segregated hospital and buried in a segregated cemetery. Which means I don't care how much you tell yourself to quit this protesting and stuff and just build your business. Your business can't exist if your rights are not protected. You sit up there and think these folk gonna let you just sit up there and get rich and they ain't gonna deal with it? They don't shoot our kids cause of they W-2 form. It's about rights. They'll pull you over in a Mercedes or a Pontiac if you ain't got no rights. We cannot duck that those that are now in charge will roll back our rights. And you run around acting like you building a business can evade them taking back voting rights and criminal justice rights. I've had black zillionaires call me trying to get their kids out of jail. Look at how rich you are. Some of y'all been in National Action Network a while. Yes, we fought for Amadou Diallo. Yes, we fought for Abner Louima. But one Saturday morning, y'all saw Michael Jackson come here. Michael Jackson, a multi-millionaire, but they perp walked him. Mug shot him. Had nowhere to come, he stood up with us. His money couldn't buy his freedom. Only those that stand up for justice will stand with you there. Tonight. I ain't watched nothing all year. 
Just like some of y'all ain't Christian till Easter Sunday morning. Y'all are one day a year Christian. I'm a one day a year football. I didn't know who was in the game. Didn't you? But I'm up there rooting for the Falcons. Try to find me an Atlanta hat somewhere. I'm sitting there watching the game. They come out like raging bulls, right? They was gone. They was gone. Folk was from every time the Patriots got the ball. They intercepted. They doing this. They doing that. Halftime. Lady Gaga come out. America the beautiful. Oh, no, no, no. Jump through the ceiling. I said, good God. Of God. This gonna be my thing. Atlanta, town of John Lewis, gonna win the Lady Gaga bust the ceiling. I'm right there with you. But then, halfway through the fall, this boy stopped throwing the ball. Ran all these yards unanswered. Boom, boom, boom. Drove it into a tie and then overtime. And when he got the overtime, that was it. That was it. He threw the one ball. Boy, Carter went right down on the line, yeah, game yeah. over. Reason why I'm still fighting yeah. is Hillary lost, yeah. election gone. But I'm gonna drive Trump in the overtime. Yeah. It ain't over yet. I look at the score, I know we behind. I look at what y'all got up on the box, I know we behind. I know we had a bad first half. I know y'all ready to leave the stadium, but it ain't over yet. If I can just get the ball one more time, I'm gonna run for the goal line. Cause I serve a God that one day, Joshua asked him to have his son stand still. I need a little time, Lord, just hold the son and the God I serve is in charge of time. And if I got to get some time on my side, don't relax yet, Trump. We going into overtime. And you ain't never been where we gonna go. We gonna bring this over the goal line. The first will be last. The last will be first. The lion and the lamb will lay down together. God will. God will. God will make a way for his children. If you have not joined, come on, everybody say. Yeah. 